Hey, what's up everybody? This is Ming Chen from Comic Book Ben, and you're listening to Best Threesome Ever. Find Best Threesome Ever on Facebook. Uh, search Best Threesome Ever. That's three with the number three. It is my favorite podcast. Welcome to Best Threesome Ever, a podcast discussing all things revolving around nerdy pop culture. Probably not what you were expecting, but it's just as fun. Now here are your hosts, Nick, Rob, and Kevin. It's like a bat. <laughs> it's like a bat creature. It's bat- Batman. <laughs> All right, here we go. Best threesome ever, episode 129, brought to you by Heroic Goods and Games and Jaybird Wines. I am not Kevin. I'm not Nick. I'm not Rob. And there we go. Yay. No. <laughs> See, I feel like letting him start these now is like... He's going to try and find a new trick each time? Yep, he's going to find right. a new trick. I Keep you guessing. Yeah. Let me start these. I started, I've started pretty much every single <laughs> episode. Right? <laughs> Just let him stuff. <laughs> I mean, technically, it's your show, Kevin. I'm just your sidekick. Whatever. <laughs> there you go. I like how you always put those glasses on every single time. I know. I can't on. help it. They're fun. <laughs> it's like a good luck charm for the show or something. Uh, exactly. So, some stuff has happened since we last recorded. Rob, what happened to you? You got, you got a little fun stuff? Nope. Nope. Okay. Nope. How did that new smoker turn out? Oh, it turned out great. It's uh, it's really super awesome. Um I, uh, this is, it was a little quirky, but I figured it out. And, uh, now that I've, now that she and I have come to an accord, uh, I know how to run it right. Um, it's bigger. It's, it's significantly bigger than my other one. It's practically twice the, the, um, meat space. And now you have two. Now I have, well, I have three actually, Jeez. but I have technically two and a half because uh the the barrel smoker also still doubles as a regular grill you can just run it as a regular grill it's not a big deal it doesn't lose a ton of heat and that's not the point of direct grilling anyways but um so yeah i have this big one and it it runs well it is a fuel hog but yeah it's worth it it works really well i love it and it seals so well holds heat so much better Charcoal there? Oh, charcoal. Yeah, it's a right. char- wooden charcoal. Nice. Nice. I'm nice. glad it worked out. Yeah. Smoked a lot of meat, huh? I did. A lot, of, nice lot of leftover. Of- <laughs> There's still some in my freezer. Nice. I'm nothing wrong with that. Enjoy it in a couple months. Zombie apocalypse. If it happens in the next month, you'll be fine. Be good. Yeah. Some protein. No? All right. I mean, I, I've already taken one uh, rack out of the freezer, and... It's fine. Well, it's not always as good as it was originally, but I mean... Well, that's the thing, though. My ribs do get better. Really? After yeah. being frozen? Uh-huh. Well, no. After like, after I uh, refrigerate or, or cool them off. But I think it might be that like I really do need to send them through an oven mm. so that they warm up gradually versus a microwave, which... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm no trained chef, but I would even agree to that one. No, I, my, that hurt my I, heart. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> Usually if I can't. It's, there's so many of them, I'm fucking snacking on them, man. <laughs> I don't have time to sit there and spend fucking 20 minutes with the oven. Bring me some. I barely ate that day. That sounds like not my fault. Well, fucking kind of was. You invited all those cool people. You could have you brought me them. some, too. I mean, I wasn't even there. But I know. What the hell? Yeah, sorry I had to work. Oh, okay. That's fine. It wasn't like it was a by choice thing. It was a uh, I had to work thing. And I couldn't get time off, so. Yeah. The way they do vacations and time off at my job is really fucked up, so. Mm. Um, yeah, the uh, film festival happened, and that was fun. Yeah, how was that? Uh, it was fun. It was cool. It was crazy. I can't, um, I can't really describe what it's like to kind of see what I made on a big screen, but it was kind of cool. Uh, and then the nominations came out, and we got nominated for Best Actor for Sean, who plays the main character, and then Best Overall Cast. Yay, golf clap. Um, Any technical awards? Uh, no, hmm. but they haven't announced like the genre awards, or, like Best Drama or anything like that. They didn't. I don't know if they really like say who's up for those, but they just kind of say these are the categories. And there, I there may or may not be like a, a new <coughs> newbie kind of one, but I don't know. Oh, sure. 
So we'll see on the 25th of June. So okay, a week after, so in between when we're recording, this will come out. Or the next time we record, never mind. Between episodes, this will come out. Yeah. <laughs> I will find out. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. I'm excited. I'm congr- I mean, Sean truly deserved it. I mean, he was phenomenal, and the cast was great, too. And So, yeah, there was that. Um, I was very happy and very proud of it. So, there we go. People liked it. They Good. didn't hate it. They you didn't say, be. it sucked. <laughs> so, goal achieved. It um, sucked, Nick. Thanks. It's just helping. I appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that's about it for me. Anything happened to you over the past between episodes, Kevin? Probably. Who remembers? <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell we're light on content today? No. Um, actually, Sabra's uh, son turned 18. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So, threw him a big gay party with a big gay cake, and it was oh, nice. awesome. Did you go to the, you know, like the stupid 18 year old things that like go buy a pack of cigarettes, go to the no, casino, no, go buy no. a porno magazine? No, no, no. no. And actually, no. you have to be 21 to buy cigarettes now. Really? In Minneapolis and St. Paul, yes, that's true. That's stupid. It might be by county, too. So I think it's by county. county. So Hennepin and Ramsey, I know for sure. Well, that's where we live, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I did not, I, I honestly did not even know that. So. Which is kind of <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> wow. Well, yeah, they they decided they decided that that cigarettes were bad for eighteen year olds and got legislation passed in uh, two days. I think it was uh, very very quickly. So it turns wow. out that uh, that wow. when when a law can be passed, it, it's actually not that big of a deal to get it passed quickly. Weird how huh. that works. So, uh, but yeah, so. no, at the, you know he and you know he doesn't do any of that anyway. So no. yeah, um, so we just went to the the, the Maple Tavern what? and uh, you know. Couple friends, family. Nice. I I did know I did know that like for vape juice you have to be twenty one now. I knew that they changed that one. So I didn't know about the cigarettes and the uh, uh so well wow, okay. Wow. Well, is that all tobacco or just cigarettes specifically? I think it's all tobacco. Okay. Yeah. I think, yeah. Like that, when you're that my makes age, sense. It doesn't yeah, I haven't had to pay attention to age laws in years. <laughs> yeah, we got the uh, we got the cake from the Willette Bakery in uh, in oh. Brooklyn Park. Oh, okay. very good, very sweet, very rich. But it, it was the I'm not a, really a cake guy, and it was goddamn delicious. Uh, it's just whew, that some bitch was sweet. So uh, <laughs> I brought home a, a slice for uh, for Blake and Kane. Told them I brought them home some gay diabetes, and they loved it. So because <laughs> it was obviously a rainbow cake on the inside. Awesome. So. That's yeah, nice. Oh, it's Pride Month too, by the way. We I think sure. we Pride 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 Month. forgot to mention that in the last episode, which came out on June first. So happy Pride, everybody! Son of a bitch. I, I know, mean, God we recorded it in May. Like, yeah, but we should have known. Mm. We should at least guessed that it would come out. <laughs> <laughs> Shit! Damn it! We forgot. You know what we forgot? Mm. We forgot to guess it was what month this was going to be. <laughs> he just said we should have guessed it was Pride Month. Oh yeah, you're right. We should have guessed it was Pride Month. <laughs> what is happening right now? I'm so confused where you're going with this. I am too. I'm lost. Where, where are we? I was just making one of his word choices. Fair enough. Right. Well, keep every go. second of that dead air. It was, del- it was scrumptious. <laughs> Nothing like dead air to boost a podcast. <laughs> yeah. I was so worried I said something wrong. No, I was, I was just like going so through my confused. head. I'm just like, what, why, what about that could be misconstrued? Oh no. I what still did feel I like I'm blowing this son of a bitch out when I get really, <laughs> running, when I get really sassy. Fair enough. Oh, ooh, that was. I feel like, was that maybe too. That, I feel like that was too much. Just to, yeah, and let's yeah, do, let's yeah, do just, a little bit. Just, just a little to the left, a little to the left, yeah. right there. Yeah, massage the balls. There you go. Mm. Um, Happy Pride. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was I going to say? I don't know. I lost it. Uh, we were talking about Pride. I know that uh, we were. And I don't remember what I was going to say. June. Oh, uh, funny. It was, speaking of it, when it came out. Um, so I've noticed statistically that if I put them out on Fridays, if I put the episode out on Friday, like there's this huge boost on Sunday of like downloads, which huh. I think is weird. It is odd. Um, so I might just start releasing them on Fridays now. Do it. Uh, instead of Tuesdays. Uh, so... There it is. Um, See how that goes for us. I'm curious if you go back and look at the other ones. Do I they have. also have a boost on Sundays? If it's been later in the week, yes. Oh, okay. Hmm. It's very weird. I don't know, because it, it wouldn't surprise me if that's when like the podcatchers go through all of the podcasts and just <laughs> scoop them up. 
fine by me. Yeah. <laughs> if it boosts our numbers, I don't give a shit. Yeah. I don't know how that works, though. So I don't either. But if it boosts our numbers, I don't give a shit. So yeah, yeah it's weird. Um, so yeah, so probably get these on Fridays now. Uh, at least until I might be just a fluke too. So we'll see. So we, we talked about the previews, but we haven't talked about the show. So Modoc, uh, you said you binged it, Kevin. Whole thing. I've watched like two or three episodes, and I'm not. I love it. Overly, it's, I love it. It's so fucking weird. It is weird, but it just seems like it's just like there's no real story. We'll keep going past the two, three episodes. Well, maybe it's just. I mean, I like <laughs> and I like Pat Oswald. I just and it's just I don't know. Um. So like why well, you know so I whatever it's, it is what it is. I feel like maybe you've been spoiled a little bit. By, uh, uh, Nathan Fillion is incredible in it <laughs> as Wonder Man. <laughs> no, that makes sense. Hmm. Hmm. I think Alan Tudyk was Arcade. Hmm. <laughs> Shout out to all my homies who played Arcade's Revenge on <laughs> Nintendo back in the day. Uh, did not have only followed the uh, the comic book character. And yeah. boy, you sure wishes he was the Riddler. <laughs> <laughs> he sure does. So you watch the whole series? Good. I mean, does it get real good? You know, yeah, quirky? yeah, it's good. It's fun. Is it, they leave it open for a second? Oh yeah, big time. Okay. Mm. Is it storyline based or is it? There is a, an overarching story, but for the most part, it's just you know it, a little bit like Archer, where you know what hijinks will I get in this week? Workplace sort of comedy type or kind of, but I mean not not really because I mean some of it takes place at AIM. Okay. Um, but a good majority of it is just him trying to uh, salvage his relationship with his estranged wife, okay. who is voiced by uh, um, uh, Ellie from, from Lucifer. Okay. And his daughter is voiced by Amy from Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Outstanding. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and his, mm-hmm. uh, his, other, his son is voiced by... Um, Futz Bumwaller? Yeah, Futz Bumwaller. Oh, yeah, that guy. Oh, why am I blanking on it now? I, I just had it. Well, I remember I, I looked it up the other the other day when I was watching it, and uh, so I, oh, uh, ben, I don't even need to look it up. It's Ben Schwartz. Yeah. Oh, was, okay. Who is amazing in it? That makes sense. Ben Schwartz is generally amazing in I things. I love that guy. The worst. <laughs> I I uh, I revised my statement. Ben Schwartz is amazing in almost everything. He's incredible in that show. Whatever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's also the thing of like I, I I have such a hard time with those mockumentary styles. I, I get that, yeah. but he he is infinitely watchable. As is um, I believe you. As is the girl who plays his sister. Oh okay, yeah, Jenny, I, Jenny Slate. Oh, I do love who Jenny was, uh, Slate. Professor Skirth in Venom, mm. which was like the, weirdly the most serious role I've ever seen her in. Right? Mm. Yeah, still mad that she got bullied into. Ending her relationship with Chris Evans. Ooh. Yeah, they dated. Really? Hmm. And First people, of all, good for her. Second of all, good for him. Right? She's, <laughs> she's amazing. And, but people didn't think she was physically up to what they think Chris Evans' standards should be. Well, wow. Why don't you let Chris Evans decide that? Yeah. He, he certainly thought so. What the fuck? It doesn't fucking matter what other people think, man. Well, it's not like it's not like Chris Evans gave to it and said, "Oh, you know, people don't think you live up to my standards, so I'm going to break up with you." That kind of would have a dick move. So she ended it because of that. Mm-hmm. That's, That's sad. Really people, stop being shitty. horrible people. Stop being shitty people. Can we just be better? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> oh, you're serious. <sighs> yeah, just, that world would be a little bit better if people were better to each other. Silly internet. Thanks, Hallmark. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome. I should put that on a card and sell it to Hallmark. <laughs> <laughs> Make millions of dollars, and then I will buy everybody tacos. All right, so maybe I'll, I'll go back to Modoc and check her out and see what's going on with it. So yeah, yeah. Uh, I thought it was super fun. Yeah. Um, and then in casting news, apparently Quicksilver got cast as Craven. Yeah, Quicksilver is back in the MCU. Good for you, Aaron. You're and doing great. Who was Craven again? He's Craven the Hunter was a very fun Spider-Man villain. Was actually one of the early, I think, villains in the Spider-Man animated series in the, in the is, 90s. Yep. Oh, okay, sorry. Well, in the 90s, the animated series. Yeah, uh, but he's a you know kind of a Russiany 
um, uh, hunter who's hunted all the big game, and then he decides that the clearly the next step is Spider Man. Yeah, I was gonna say his his angle is an interesting one. In that, like, he's not really a villain; he's just a douche. Yeah, he's like a rich guy. <laughs> Doesn't he like a money rich guy with he wore like a he's, tiger? He's basically the Jimmy John's guy with sick abs. Yeah, mm. I was gonna say, or he's like uh, that one. Fucking what's a rum tum tiger from cats, but without being a cat? Because his little outfit. Actually, you're not wrong. That costume is very similar. Yeah, because it had the big. Poofy, yeah, but I mean, yeah. as far as, as, oh. as you know, didn't he have a daughter? Disposition too? is. You have a daughter too. That Craven? was Yeah, was or, a foe in Batman for a little bit. Or, no, 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 no. Well, because Batman is DC, so no, they would oh, not be connected. Not Batman. But they had a. Did they have a. Hmm, what am I thinking of? Was there a similar character in? Batman that was... No, it was DC. Or it was Marvel. I don't know what I'm thinking. I know who Craven is. Yeah. He didn't have a daughter. No. What the fuck am I thinking of? I have no <laughs> idea, but it's <laughs> super fun. I was going to say, I'm enjoying watching I mean, the wheels I mean, spin here. Uh, Raz al Ghul had a daughter, Talia al yeah. Ghul, and she was like a freaky deaky ninja. And then she <laughs> stole Batman's DNA and made a son, and he's an asshole. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And I can't believe I had I have to say this, but Star Trek Voyager did it first, and that upsets me. The stealing the DNA thing yeah. and the yeah. I get you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah We're yeah. watching through Voyager right I now. I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, he did have the big lion thing. Yeah. Well, so what the fuck am I thinking yeah. of? I don't know. Man. Are you maybe thinking of Black Cat? No. Because she's actually derived from Captain America. Mm. But then is also the Marvel's version of Catwoman. I don't fucking know. So anyway, so back to this casting. I'll try to figure it out. Back to this casting <laughs> thing. Do we think is a good idea, a bad idea? It's stupid! <laughs> there are other actors, guys. He's in the MCU. Fucking. There's, there's other people out there. There is. I will provide a counterpoint. It may not have been Marvel's decision. Well, it might have been was, Sony's. I was going to say, was it maybe his, his mom's decision? His mom wife? <laughs> his mom wife. Oh, God. Here you go, honey. Take this for here's, a right. here, Here's a part for you, sweetie. You can be the lead. <laughs> All right. Ooh, so you work in those dabs. I, <laughs> Does she have anything to do with that movie? No. I doubt it. No. It would be funny All if she right. did that. I, I Your apologize. Your mommy's a superhero, aren't you? So, but, <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to test these costumes right. out. <laughs> oh god damn. before the show is she a furry though i jesus <laughs> she's not doing this movie i know but i was like if you never mind i understood where you went but okay. yikes um so before we started the show oh. i uh let both nick and kevin into the knowledge of aaron taylor johnson and his wife um who is a director and they met on the movie Nowhere Boy when he was 18 and she was 42. And good for her. Good for her, but. <laughs> well, that's when they met. When did they yeah. start banging? Or dating, as some people call it. Uh, shortly after that. <laughs> oh. Some people call it. Hang on. <laughs> uh, I don't know where it's going Nick, with that. I, Nick, I have a theory about. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> theory about <laughs> nothing relativity <laughs> how the world works i i have a theory about why you don't date very much now <laughs> because i keep getting ghosted and giving fake getting fake addresses from girls when i try to go pick them up for a date is that why because that's i think that's pretty much why yeah that's probably pretty okay. much why all right um, I, <laughs> it's a real fun vibe in the room right now. Yeah. It's like mommy just hit. It's like daddy just hit mommy at the dinner table, and I'm still trying to eat. Thank you, Dane Cook. All your peas. Yeah. It's okay. He's fine, Daddy just got a little angry. <laughs> so Dane Cook's comedy things are on uh, HBO now. You can. Are they? If I they're, might have to watch them. Oh, cool. I can't as long wait as to his, not watch them. As long as it's his older shit. Like, his original shit. Like, I just like the way he, like, says things. Right. Uh, yeah. The delivery. His delivery, his is, delivery is always really fun. Yeah. It was it, Vicious Circle. Mouth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just, just mouth. Uh, Vicious Circle is there for sure, because I watched that, mm-hmm. uh, like, a couple months ago. And then, what's the other one he had? Vicious Circle. And then there was... One after that, then that one's not so good. 
but Vicious Circle was like just end peak of his comedy. Yeah, I, I think Vicious Circle was kind of like where the the beginning of the end talks about but, the uh, uh, B and R breaking or, or B and E breaking and entering, kicks in the door. Th- I thought that was one where he talked about uh, the first time he ever cheated. He did that. He does that too. Yeah. <laughs> Shut that key up! I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a new key. I laughed my fucking balls off. I thought it was super funny. And then after that, it you know it gets a little repetitive and chatty. Yeah. But yeah, he started making movies and then kind of. <laughs> and some of those are okay. <laughs> uh, what's uh, my best friend's girlfriend? I still uh, my best friend's girl. I legitimately like. I do too. I think it's a really good movie, and like he's not horrible in it. Mm-mm. He's actually like hilarious in it. My um, uh, uh, good luck, Chuck. However, is a steaming <laughs> pile of fucking dog shit. I was gonna tee you up for it, and I was I was about to be like, how about good luck, Chuck? Oh, it's god no, awful. I, yeah, Employee of the Month is not a good movie, but it's cute and very fun. It's, yeah, <laughs> I would agree. Uh, yeah, good luck, Chuck. Was highly disappointing because you're like, oh, he's gonna sleep with all these chicks. So you get to see some. Something good in it. No. You don't. I think the best. I, I don't understand how it is a movie about that much fucking. It doesn't show a single thing. I think the best. I, I think the most you get out of it was uh, Jess Galba's like underwear when he like r- yeah. rips off the skirt with the door thing, which was in the preview so you, or the trailer. So you're like, all right. <laughs> best part ruined. <laughs> best part ruined. Goodness. I think you get more of Jessica Alba and Idle Hands, the best worst movie ever made, <laughs> starring Seth Green and Offspring. <laughs> I don't, I don't remember that. Oh, such a good oh. movie. You watch fucking uh, Dexter Holland. That's his name, right? The lead singer of Offspring. <laughs> yes. You watch his fucking face get peeled off by a disembodied zombie hand. It was amazing. Mm-hmm. Spoilers, I guess. Uh, watch I'm, that movie fucking immediately because it's goddamn incredible. I feel like you're burying the lead of the fact that uh, the lead is Devin Sawa. The lead <laughs> is Devin Sawa. <laughs> that is not nearly as important as, as uh, Dexter uh, sen- Holland. As Dexter Holland and his head peeled off and sentient zombie Seth Green <laughs> whose head I think was packing taped back on I cannot remember uh, I don't remember either was, uh, was something, it stapled? something like that I vaguely remember this movie oh, I'm looking I, at, I think it was it was on USA Up All Night for sure oh, oh yeah you can't watch that on TV you're missing all the good bits well of course <laughs> Uh, I it? mean, what? <laughs> Are you saying there's some nudity? There, there, there may or may not be a, a boob or two. <laughs> uh, good thing Google's a thing. Well, there is. It's not as fun. I know. Are well, you looking up the boob? I am. <laughs> <laughs> the girl in the kiss makeup. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I feel like there's another one too. Like a. Yeah, this girl like in a bra, like with some ropes around her or something. Something like that. This is what happens on a slow news week. (laughs) Jesus. Oh, um, Jessica Alba. Although, uh, speaking of Spider Man, if we can bring it back. Oh, sure. Ever so slightly. uh, Rumor is the trailer for Far From Home. Uh, not far from home. No way, uh, home. no way home is going to drop tomorrow. Of course, the day after. Re- and I was gonna and and like they said this like a week and a half ago. I'm like, well, since that's the day after record, it's basically guaranteed it'll come out. So <laughs> enjoy that trailer. Uh, uh, I, I don't know. I guess it a, was cool. A week before you listen to this, guys. Do you want to talk about the the the, Sp- the Spider Man trailer? Just <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah, we'll, we'll oh talk about God, how that's... I can't believe that uh, the the Red Band trailer of that. There's so much cursing and blood. I, yeah. I can't believe Spider-Man said fuck. I know. You're worried about the fuck? How about the five cunts from MJ? Jesus. Well, right? that, that's expected. She showed her left boob, but not her right boob. <laughs> that's kind of weird. <laughs> right. So it went from PG to R real quick. Yeah. Was, but the jump was, like, seamless. Yeah. It was just like, oh, we're just waiting to rated our Spider-Man movie. Mysterio's cool. back. It's crazy. Oh, weird. Ned's born-again conversion seems tasteful, though. But I like him as Hobgoblin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And Rhino? Which actually explains the character a little better. Yeah, I, I can't believe yeah, they, bought, makes they brought back Paul Giamatti's Rhino for this one for the, the exact same length of time. Right. I almost same. think it was the exact same scene. I think it was. Yeah. I think they literally just cut and paste and then just... <laughs> Edited in Just put home. Holland in instead of Garfield. I can't wait to listen back to this and go, okay, well, how much? <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, though, so we'll fingers it. crossed for that left boob thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do think it's important, though, to mention that I, the, the I, Spider-Man uh, theme song this time around is done by not, not the best. Not done by Aerosmith? Well, okay, here, let me, let me show you. Uh, one of the... 
one of the oh, uh, stupid ads. One of the Tobey right. Maguire uh, Spider Man movies. The, the theme. I want to say it was the first one. The theme song was the rock version was done by Aerosmith. Like the rock version of the classic. Yeah. Spider Man. Yeah. No, that was the Ramones. Uh, yeah, the Ramones did the rock version. It was the Ramones. Well, what did Aerosmith do? Nothing. Nothing of value since uh, 1991. Dream on. Since Dream on. Wow. Hmm. Aerosmith. I might have a. a oh, I, I apologize. Nothing of value since Walk This Way, Talk This Way with, with Run DMC. There you go. Uh, <laughs> no, they did, uh, they did it for the. Or maybe it was. What the fuck? It's, Are they you thinking of it. Armageddon? No. They, Armageddon on? I can't play it's the it porn right version. here, but uh, they did do it. Um, I just don't remember what Spider-Man movie. Spider-Man I'm theme, music still video. Still hoping none of them. They, yeah, I, remember, I remember Chad Kroger and the dude from Saliva doing that uh, that hero song for Spider-Man 2. Ugh. Was it 2? I can remember. Two. They say that a hero can save us. I'm not going to stand here and wait. wait. Um, I listened to that song a lot as a teenager because <laughs> I liked it then. And yeah, I, li- it, I went back and I listened to it now. I'm like, oh man, that was kind of a banger back then. I'm like, ooh, this is very good. <laughs> <sighs> Josie Scott, by the way. Thank you. You're welcome. Was he, uh, was he with Amy Lee for a really long time? No, no you're no. thinking of the lead singer from Seether. Yes, I am. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he was with Amy uh, from Amy Lee from those, Heaven Essence. Those two bands are very interchangeable to me. <laughs> they sure That's are. That's totally understandable. <laughs> uh, I want to say it was the first one, but they did do they did do the Spider Man theme. I could have sworn. I, I think you're lying. Yeah, me too. I they did. I can't play it on my computer because we're recording on it right now. But we did. They did. Uh, I don't. I don't think that's true, but. Uh, okay. Is that okay? Maybe it was the second one? I don't know. Anyways. Holy shit, they did. What? What the fuck? Aerosmith played on a Spider-Man soundtrack? Yes. What did they do? I'm sorry. The Spider-Man theme. Fucking, I'm sorry? Spider-Man, Spider-Man. Does, does whatever, whatever Spider-Man Spider can. Yes. Spins a web, just catches flies, something about thieves. I don't remember. Hey, look, I was right. This has been something. Kevin's Poetry Corner. <laughs> Shut up. If I'm if I'm singing it, I could probably get the lyrics. <laughs> Shut up, Rob. <laughs> If I was singing, I could probably get the lyrics. It's always easier when I sing them than when I speak them. But I'm not singing for you right now. Are you our our give you hero? <laughs> for good. <laughs> Your version was. So I was right. You, you were startlingly right? so. Because <laughs> I only remember you. hearing the Ramones version. Yeah, me too. Yeah, oh, well, Aerosmith did it at some point. But did it say what movie? Which what? What Spider Man? First one. Oh, the first one. Yeah, uh, yeah, the first Raimi one. Yeah, you're welcome. I just, as an Aerosmith fan, sorry, I just I remember when they do silly stuff. Because then the which is it the also the first one or the second one where that lady on the street is singing the theme with her little ukulele or something? Oh, that was the second. That was one. the second yeah. one because it was because uh, it was the one where he lost his powers. Yeah, yep. yeah, oh, that's right. That's right. Where did you go to, Spider Man? Yeah. Oh. Um. So there we go. Uh, so Craven, <laughs> so I have Craven. to go back and watch Spider Man Two now because uh, I don't never, remember that scene. Never a chore. Uh, do you? Who would you cast instead of Kick Ass? Uh, literally anyone on the planet. Okay, Rob, any? Josh Gad. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a it's a running joke now. <laughs> uh, Jonah Hill. Joe Mangione. <laughs> What's the, what's the guy's name? The guy that played Joe Manganiello, which would be pretty funny since he was Flash Thompson in the first Spider-Man movie. Oh yeah, he mm-hmm. was, wasn't he? Holy yeah. shit, I forgot. Yeah, the, I wouldn't want to fight me neither, guy. Yeah. yeah. Oh man. Joe Manganiello. Yeah, Manganiello. Joe Manganiello. The, 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 whatever that was, um, had a fascinating career as like the bully. <laughs> For, for a good 10 years there. Yeah, but then he was the seed on, uh, on True Blood, and, and that was a great part for him. It was, and we got, like, buff, rugged uh, Joe Manganiello, and he looks great now. Oh. I love him, but, like, he had a career for a while in bit parts as the bully. JD's bully in Scrubs. Yep, that's sure was. what I was thinking of. I can't think of his name now, or even the show that I was thinking of, the one of, fuck. Good stuff. Mm-hmm. Even the douchey bro uh, the first time around. In um, How I Met Your Mother. Oh, I'd even take uh, Stephen Amell. He's not doing anything right now. <laughs> Stephen Amell is crazy. I 
I really do think of someone that's a little bulkier than Stephen Amell. Mm. Uh, uh, as Craven, anyways. But like, he could do it. I just, I'd love to know what they'd do. Whoever they, whoever they actually cast instead of Aaron Taylor Johnson, um, because they should. <laughs> <laughs> As long as he's got the big poofy. It was a guy who was in the movie with Gal Gadot where they pretended to be like normal people, but they were really like spies. And then like their neighbors find out about it. Um, he was in that big hit show that took place in the past. <laughs> I know. I'm fucking just killing no, it. No, no, no. It's okay. Finish finish that sentence because uh, I didn't understand. It, it like took place in the past. It was like. TV show that took place in the past. It was a huge hit. Okay. Um, timeless? No. It was, was, it was it like time in the 40s. Travel show? No, like four, 50s. Okay. 50, Mad, 60, Men? Mad Men. There it is. Okay. Oh, John Hamm? Yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. John Hamm is Craven. I would I would watch John Hamm as Craven the Hunter. That would be a good role for him. He'd have to grow some facial hair. I don't think I've ever seen him with facial hair, but he looks good with facial hair. He looks annoyingly good with facial hair. Right. You know who shouldn't play the once played a Russian in a Spider Man movie? No, it was a Punisher movie. I'm sorry. Kevin Nash. Yeah, uh, excuse me. That was one of his best parts. <laughs> it, it was. Uh, Super Shredder was one of his best parts? On le- no. Or some might even on- argue when he was in Magic Mike. Because uh, him and Joe Manglione were both in Magic Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff there. <laughs> Grandma's boy. <laughs> where he played the mover. <laughs> uh, Rock of Ages, where he played the... Uh, Never saw it. It, where he played the, he was like the security for uh, Tom Cruise's character. Long story short, I love Kevin Nash. He's a very good boy. I love Kevin Nash. <laughs> <laughs> Next to Batista, Batista, Bob, T- oh, fucking Batista, Dave Batista, Dave Batista, uh, Kevin Nash. Come on our podcast. <laughs> he was one of my favorite wrestlers. I love Big Sexy. So, sure. Yeah. Diesel. Uh, no, Big Sexy Kevin Nash. When he went back to his regular name. Oh, okay. Diesel was stupid. Diesel's how he got famous. Hang on. <laughs> I think he got more famous when he was WC, when he went over, switched over to WCW. That's where he really got his name. I mean, Diesel was big in WWE, but not... I mean, it was kind of a go-nowhere villain character. Heel. I will go ahead and say this. I uh, During the Monday Night Wars, I was an unapologetic uh, WWF weeb. I was WCW. I was WWF. My yeah. Attitude Era. Kane yeah. was my boy. <laughs> well, I did watch some. Of, I did watch some of those, and I thought they were fun. And then, I, then they got like brawn panty matches. I'm like, well, this is. I enjoy this as a boy. Uh, not a boy. I was older, but I was like, <laughs> th- just like the stories were stupid. And then what got me? I was like 14, 15. Those are some of the most perfect. important I'm times right. of my life. <laughs> but I, I do like Stone Cold Steve Austin. I've always loved him he, as a wrestler. He is an incredible person. He is. and it's super weird. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but what is. the funny story? What got me to WCW is I was flipping channels one night because I I've, I'd seen WCW. I'm like ah, whatever. I'm like, I'm Ric Flair. Who cares? Uh, that's correct. Was yeah, I saw I, I <laughs> saw I saw the Ultimate Warrior, and I'm like, "What the fuck? Who? He's still alive? Oh, not only is he still alive, he sucks. I know, but yeah. he was like doing his fucking rope shake thing. I'm like, and with the with the full fringe, the full fucking Ultimate Warrior look, and I'm like, yeah. oh fuck, now I got to start watching this. And then I was hooked, and then I watched WCW until it died. Yeah, Ultimate Warrior, uh, the Deadly Boys. That is my answer. Nice. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, get the table, get the table, Devon. The best, the best though is uh, he watch Lex Luger back then and look at him now. Whew. It's like you take a balloon and you popped it and it deflated, and went, but it's still got a little bit of air left in it. That's what Lex Luger <laughs> looks like now. Are you? Wow, I'm not, <laughs> I like that analogy. But do you want to take another shot at that? Because nope. I think there might be no. I no fucking. Nope. I, nope. I followed it perfectly. Because if you, <laughs> uh, the other day I was Selfish. watching the uh, biography of um, of uh, Macho Man Randy Savage and Li- Miss Liz Miss Elizabeth, who was Macho Man Randy Savage's actual wife for mm-hmm. a long time. Yes. Mm-hmm. And she died in Lex Luger's house because they were divorced. They were divorced by then, but uh, she died. In Lex Luger's house. So, of course, they're interviewing him. I'm like, holy fuck, Lex. A, you're old, and B, you deflated. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Just you, you're not even close to... B, you deflated. <laughs> so, Craven. <laughs> Is that where we are? Okay. No, probably. Um, no, I... You know what? 
if we're going to assume he's not in the movie, which is unfair because we're going to assume that he probably is going to be in the movie since we're assuming a multiversal uh, Spider-Man stuff. So we'll see Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield. But Theoretically, yes. Theoretically, yes. However, if it turns out that that was a lie, I don't think Tobey Maguire would be a bad Craven. I imagine somebody bulkier. I don't like Tobey Maguire as Craven. He's too goofy looking. <laughs> he is kind of goofy <laughs> looking. Bless his heart. I, that's why I thought he was a good Peter Parker. Not my favorite Peter Parker, but a good Peter Parker because he kind of had that nerdy, goofy, boyish look to him. And uh, Not my favorite Peter Parker. Though. Yeah. Um, no, my, my favorite Peter Parker at this point is Tom Holland. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, that's the thing is, Tom McGuire was a great Peter Parker. Andrew Garfield was a great Spider-Man. And Tom Holland is perfect at both. It's the love child of the two of them? Mm-hmm. Okay. Hmm. Wouldn't that be awesome if, uh, I suppose he had his own stunt double? Because Andrew Garfield's not really that much of a stunt guy like Tom Holland is. I was going to say, wouldn't it be funny if to- uh, he was his Tobey Maguire stunt double in Spider-Man and then became Spider-Man? Kind of like the kid in Ninja Turtles 2 used to w- play uh, Donatello and then came out of his Donatello and became a character. Kino? Yeah. The, uh, what's his name from... Ernie Reyes Jr.? Yeah, who was in a lot of eighty late 80s, early 90s martial arts stuff. Like Surf Ninjas? Like Surf Ninjas and... Uh, <laughs> there was a cop. There was like this weird show where his his adoptive father was a cop, but he was some martial arts, and somehow he helped him solve cases. No idea. Uh, <laughs> kick. Uh, okay, good. <laughs> I, what the fuck was it called? I was having a moment of crisis you know, <laughs> over here, just watching you rattle off things that I literally did not know the answer to, but you had every Con- single one. I'm like. I'm Conan just, the, I'm over here having an existential <laughs> crisis. Like Conan the Barbarian, the original with Arnold. Yeah, he, yeah. Had, he was the kid in that. Yeah. Oh, okay. He yeah. was the very annoying fucking. Yeah. I did vaguely uh, Pacific Islander, Asian American uh, kid in an '80s action movie. You could have been fuck. He's in, to be more he's in Superstore. Yeah. I stopped watching that like halfway through the first season. I watched the first season and I was like, Ugh. I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't deal with it. Uh, yeah, same. It, was, it just. Will Chamberlain is also I, in Conan the Barbarian. I liked yeah, that. I knew. I liked what they were trying to do, but I didn't like how they were pulling it off. Yep. I. Yep. Exactly. And I was like, oh, God, I already watched fucking Parks and Rec, so I'm done. I mean, I really wanted it to be good because I I love girl the main girl America America Ferrera yeah who left the show after a couple of seasons yeah. she's not even in it anymore that's sad mm. I'm glad I watched in the first season I really like her as an actor I realized I was only watching it for the 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 paraplegic black guy <laughs> and it just it wasn't enough to keep me to yeah. keep me in everyone else sucked so much yeah it was not good um, Rob Daryl Daryl well, that was a horrible movie nope. No, nobody remembers the movie Daryl. Good. Somebody out there probably Daryl Chill Johnson. Okay, cool. Who was that? <laughs> it's the paraplegic guy oh. at Superstore. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Welcome to No Content Theater, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Because <laughs> that's the actor Daryl Chill Mitchell. I'm sorry, but he was also in um, like in Galaxy Quest. No, oh, yeah. When he had legs, I should. Rephrase when he had use of his legs. Yeah, he got in a car accident. That's why he's in a wheelchair now. Was he the pedal to the metal commander kid? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Shut your fucking face! Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, the older version, not the kid version. But yeah, uh, Daryl Chill Mitchell. Oddly enough, the villain in uh, Wonder Woman, the the fake villain, not uh, the real villain, the one she thought was Ares, that actor. The entire movie, entire time up until this point, I was like, God, that guy looks so familiar. And for some reason, I didn't look it up. But I was like, where have I seen him before? And today, uh, uh, Aviator was on. That very, like, nine-hour-long movie of the Howard Hughes. Uh, uh, yeah, Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah, I was going to say, Leo. He's in that. And I was like, oh, that's where he's from. Yeah, stupid. Sorry. That was a waste it's of It's a really fun conversation. We all just, you, are, you, are you still there, guys? <laughs> <laughs> Hanging on with this episode? <laughs> Good Lord. In, uh, in, in podcast news, uh, Trisha Paytas left uh, Frenemies. It's one of the, the biggest podcasts right now. Really? Why? She got in a fight 
with, regarding a couple of employees of H3 Productions who actually follow on Instagram on our on the Winner Is You account before I even knew exactly what they were just because they had a couple funny posts. Um, but yeah, she quit. Right. And then she, in Trisha Paytas' form, had a sitting in her kitchen crying YouTube video that she uploaded about it, as she is one to do with breakups. So I guess, Trisha, if you're not doing anything, want to come on our podcast? Yeah, there you go. Who is this? I'm, I'm just going to keep... Uh, inviting people? Yeah, I'm just going to keep inviting people. Statistically, statistically speaking, that uh, should work. Especially with Trisha, she'll she'll fucking do whatever. Yeah, she, can, she can call in. She doesn't have to come here. I mean, she could come here. That'd be cool. But she, I don't think she lives in Minnesota. No, she definitely lives in California. She is a YouTube personality. Okay, uh, who was well known for her weird sobbing on the floor videos. Trisha, uh, Trisha Paytas. Yes. Okay. I mean, uh, and then she was on. Picture and then she was on botched because she got a boob job, and they did a not great job on them. Right, right. Okay, did they um, get fixed? No. Mm. Okay, not yet. Uh, I don't know. Hmm. I maybe she's just living her best life with them. I don't know. Yep, yep. I see her now. Okay. Oh, okay. I don't recognize her. No, Come I, on our show. I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't think it would. I just, uh, my roommate Kay watches their, their podcast because they also upload it onto YouTube. Uh, and it's, I'm, I'm enamored by these two because they're, they're ridiculous human beings and it's, it's kind of fun to watch. <laughs> but Trisha is, uh, she's a card. All right. There you go. Um, so Simon Pegg's got a new thing coming out. He does. And it looks incredible. bad. Yeah, it's called America the Motion Picture, which, as he as he states, and I want to quote it directly so I get it exactly right in his, uh, whatever you want to call it. He says, this summer witnessed, uh, witnessed the untold, totally legit, and historically accurate origins of America. Uh, it's on Netflix, June 30th. It's an animated series with, like, the founding fathers being, like, superheroes-esque looking things. So, uh, the... The trailer looks kind of funny yet horribly bad. There's like people twerking in it, and yeah, it's it's done by the same team who did does like Archer, and not not uh, George, and it also has George Washington emulating Captain America with his wrist shields, and when he's in Wakanda, and he gets new wrist shields. Yeah, so what in the red hat QAnon fuckery does, is this shit? It's by Simon Pegg, man. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, then I'm probably exactly. okay. <laughs> I missed the part where it was by Clearly. Simon Pegg. So I'm yeah, sure... It's all tongue-in-cheek and oh, taking cool. the piss and... Yeah, absolutely. Oh, good. <laughs> absolutely. So I'm sure it has his buddy uh, Nick... Uh, Nick Frost. Frost in it. Yeah, Love that sure. guy. I do, too. He's in a lot of stuff. He was just in The uh, the Nevers yeah. on HBO, which um, if you haven't watched it, I have this just... It's on my list. Hmm. Very good. Hmm. Um, and obviously, uh, Loki started, which we will talk about. I, I don't want to do it like two episodes. Let's try to make it maybe like mid episode and then finale. Yeah. Just like so we not. did with the last yeah. two. Well, yeah. we, I think uh, the last one we like every couple episodes. We no, we did two episodes on Winter Soldier and Captain America. Well, I feel we did more than that. I think we did three on maybe it was WandaVision. I was thinking of yeah. Because yeah, Captain America and Winter Soldier was only fucking six episodes long. Yeah, and how many is Loki supposed to be? What a fantastic question! I wish I had the answer to. I hope it's not. Six. I'm going to say twenty three. I'm going to say nine, just to be. They, this one, the first one is uh, six. It's six uh, again. Six. Okay. okay, the first one was an hour long, so um, it was. It, I would spoil the free. It was. Excuse me. It was fifty one minutes. <laughs> I can't even say I rounded up because that'd be wrong. Uh, you're right. Um, it's 51 minutes. No, rounded up it would be it would be an hour, but you don't round up from 51. <laughs> right. Um, it would be 50. Uh, so. <laughs> no, that's rounded down. Yes. Moving on. <laughs> Can we submit this episode for like podcast awards? Sure, or, right. do it. Let's do it. <laughs> Get the raspberry or something. Um, a razzy. Raspberry. God bless your heart, Nick. I love you so much. <laughs> there is there's an award called the Razzies. I know, but oh. you called it the Raspberries. <laughs> it's technically the Golden Raspberry Awards. I know, but like nobody calls nobody it the calls Raspberries. It. <laughs> That's true. 
Whatever. Uh, spoiler free. The of the first episode. It's it's fun, and it's very introspective on Loki and very interesting. So um, I'm I'm hooked. I, it's enjoyable, and there's a lot of things you go, wow. I mean, just along with Loki, he kind of goes through these wow moments. And you're like, holy shit. Okay. I mean, Owen Wilson's right there. And what do you think you are? Some kind of god of mischief? Owen Wilson is fantastic in it. I, I mean, bet. better than the preview. I believe that. Way be- in just the first episode, way better than the preview show. So really? I give him crap, but I love Owen Wilson. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I, Owen you- Wilson, come on our show. <laughs> Uh, well, Loki, Loki, come on our show. There are a lot of people in California that do listen to our podcast, so thank you for all you people in California that listen to us. Can you Thanks, send a message Mariah. to Owen Wilson and Trisha yeah. Paytas? And you, you all know each other, right? And, yeah. who, uh, and Kevin and Kevin Nash to come on our podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be fun. Kevin Nash would be fun. Uh, <laughs> I bet he would be fun. <laughs> Seems like a pretty chill dude. Yeah, probably now that now that he's sober, <laughs> right? There was a part when he was very not sober, and he wasn't very not fun. <laughs> But yeah, it looks the Simon Pegg thing looks. I think he said it looks it, fun. Yeah, it looks sure. fun. I'm gonna watch it. <laughs> I'll watch it. Oh, I, I did want to ask, uh, just so I can be prepared. What is the uh, deep seated emotional trauma that we're gonna go through with Loki? Can you tell us yet? Deep seated emotional trauma. Well, like with WandaVision, you have you know a very light story about you know sitcoms through the ages masking grief. Um, and then, you know, you've got this cool buddy cop lethal weapon comedy masking itself as a treatise on racism. Well, racism, uh, uh, and PTSD and PTSD. Yeah. (sighs) Um, probably not going to say this quite right, but, um, uh, redemption. Mm. Very, very, I feel like you called that. A very redemptive. I, I feel it probably will become very redemptive and very, like I said, introspective. Uh, look, Loki's own introspective look at his his actions. Hmm. Okay. So, I mean, I could be wrong. Yeah. But that from the first episode, that's kind of what I get. Okay. How to go and uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? Where God went wrong? Some more of God's biggest mistakes, and who is this God person anyway? <laughs> <laughs> I love those. Uh, the old the old TV show used to be fun because used to have always those little uh, BBC episode ones. Uh, but when they used to air them or whatever, they used to have like little fun little things at the beginning and end of them. But that could also be the alternative titles of the first three Thor movies. <laughs> yeah, not wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so upset right now, <laughs> but I can I can I can say this without giving it away. They do confirm one very big thing that has been of question about Loki, but they confirm it very much in this episode that he's gender fluid. fluid? I don't want to spoil it. Okay, no, like that was uh, that's been spoiled for like a week. Someone took a screenshot of like his papers, and it says that he's gender fluid. No, oh, it's not that. Okay, no. Uh, one of not a controversy, but debate about Loki and like specifically MCU Loki. Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. Um, so that will be answered. So people who wanted an answer, you will get it. Yeah. And people who don't want to believe it will probably boohoo it and say that's not right, and we should rewrite it, and we should file a petition to rewrite this whole entire. Oh, I series. know what you're talking about. Then. I <clears throat> mean, because he's a variant, because we've known about that since the beginning. No, 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 no not that. No, 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 no. Let's watch the episode. You'll find I, out. Just stop guessing things. <laughs> <laughs> watch the episode. You'll find out. And people who are listening to this episode already know, or listening to, yeah, to this episode already know, because they would have watched it already. Um, Presumably, yeah. But yeah, it's good. So watch it. You had a, you just watched something recently. He's Kevin. actually B. Arthur under all of that. That's true. I, I would love that. <laughs> I would. Uh, yes, I, uh, I just watched Cruella. How was it? And spoilers, I don't care because I don't. I mean, I don't really care. I mean, it's, movie it's 101 Dalmatians, so like, what do you? What, it leads into that. I mean, kind of. Um, it's it's interesting. It wasn't quite what I thought it would be, but a lot of it also was what I thought it would be. Um, I have a lot of small complaints about it that didn't make sense to me. Mm-hmm. Um, but there are also a lot of things that were genuinely very cool. So. There's a common sort of spoiler that's been going around the internet. It's mm-hmm. popped up in memes. 
Is it fucking true that like she just goes villainy full throttle because her mom was killed by Dalmatians? No. Okay. Um, that is what sets off the beginning of the story. Okay. Um, it's why she had sort of a rough childhood. But yes, it's why. But her mom was killed her, by. Her Dalmatians. mother was killed by. Dal- well, her mother was killed by Emma Thompson, who sicked three very angry Dalmatians on her mother, who pushed her over a cliff. Okay. Mm. That's interesting. It was it was very shoehorned, but I mean, um, it is, which is yeah, weird because Dalmatians. Also, but but it's even weirder because. In the end, she has the Dalmatians. They're her mm. dogs at the end. And they huh? have puppies, one of whom she sends to uh, what's his face, and one she it's, sends to, to she sends Pongo to, yep. uh, to, to, to the, the guy. Jack, uh, uh, Jeff Daniels. Yeah, and she sends the uh, Perdita to the girl. Who, yeah. and so she sets this thing up, and what it, it kind of does throughout the movie. Uh, she basically says, you know, you can't believe every story that's told about me. Sometimes I do things just for the reaction, just for the look of it all. Because she wears like a polka dot um, dress at one point, and she makes people think that she killed the the main villain's puppies, well, well dogs, dogs, to create this dress. She's like, no, they're fine. They're over here. I'm just, you know, I'm being a dick. So it kind of turns 101 Dalmatians into a... Um, sort of an unreliable narrator story. Okay, where Cruella was was never going to make coats out of the puppies. It was just what she wants people to think, and maybe she just wanted them because they're her dogs. Mm. In a way, hmm. why do I feel like that waters down the original movie? It does quite. It very much waters down Cruella. You know, she. You know, they took a, a character who. Wanted to skin puppies to make a coat into yeah. just sort of an eccentric. Okay, so this this they this takes my personal issues with the way they do some of these stories and flips it sideways. So I can't actually be mad because they're it, not doing it that. It wasn't but at the same a, time. It wasn't a full redemption movie. Yeah, but they did Harley Quinn the fuck out of her. Uh, mm. So. On a scale from like Wicked to Maleficent, where would this like fall in the? Uh, backstory for Cruella and the character rehabilitation scale. Um, definitely not as much as nowhere near Maleficent, okay, because sure. that was a full on we've made her an anti hero kind of a thing, right? Sure. Um, because like even throughout the movie, uh, you know, the the two henchmen that are in 101 Dimensions are with her the entire time, mm. and as she still be- played by Hugh Laurie and uh, Weasley. <laughs> no, Damn. Um, Arthur. I, Weasley. I love the two guys who played them, especially the chubby one. He was such a delight. And this is the live action one. This is the li- yeah. well. I'm, this, she, Cruella. I'm talking yeah. about Cruella. Right, but you're, the two characters you're talking about from the live action 101 Dalmatians. Yeah, they were also okay. in the animated one. But yeah, yeah they're they're also, they? yeah. Oh, okay, they're yeah. a big part of it. Um, so they, because they're the ones who stole the puppies, like um, potentially the actual villains of the movie. Potentially, but they're 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 the good hearted ones in this. Oh, like okay. they they start as street urchins and thieves, but like as she becomes more Cruella, uh, she becomes kind of a dick to them. And they're like, why are we putting up with this? Like, you were, you were, you don't have to be an asshole just because you found out your mother is also kind of an asshole. Sure. Hmm. Cover your ears if you don't want this massive spoiler. It turns out that her mother was Emma Thompson's character the whole time. Uh huh. Okay. So she killed herself? No, but. I gotcha. Yeah. But like the it's, adopted. it has yeah it has a little bit of a like a tangled sort of a thing and sure she didn't want a baby so she wanted to get rid of it uh, so also a little bit of like Snow White kind of a mm. yeah yeah okay so worth the watch or no um honestly the the story while a bit ham fisted uh, the uh, costume design the overall aesthetic of the movie uh, the gay sidekick um, and the concert scene. Uh, we're all very much worth uh, the exorbitant ticket price I paid to watch it on Disney Plus. <laughs> okay. Well, I think uh, it was my Disney Plus, but I think Saber actually ended up buying it because it was on Heroku TV. I don't. Oh, know you have to works, buy it. I thought it was just on there. No, it nope, is. It's, it's on like the Premier Access. It's, it's yeah. Premier Access. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, they want you to pay theater ticket prices, yeah. which is a which is a 
I mean, a rabbit hole for another day on the ethics yeah. of that, but it's. Um, I enjoyed it. I I would say maybe, unless you have like a deep, loving, connected, emotional attachment to Disney villains or um, 101 Dalmatians or making sure you see all of the these live action adaptions, then I would say maybe buy it. But other than that, wait for it to eventually come back to Disney Plus free. Sure. Okay. I wouldn't. I wouldn't go out of your way for this one. All right. All right. Hmm. Uh, but I overall, I I enjoyed it. All right. Yeah. Uh, Emma Stone is incredible in it, and and sure, of course she is. And absolutely devours every scene she's in. Great. So. Oh, excellent. I love Emma Stone as an actress. I love Emma. She seems legitimately again like, like a, a cool, cool person. Yeah. She does like pink and like type of party. This is Emma Stone. You should be on our podcast. Emma Stone, come on our podcast. <laughs> Pink, also come on our podcast. Emma Stone yeah. and Pink at the same time, come on our podcast. Oh my god, that'd be sweet. That would be sweet. I bet they. I bet they'd be really chummy too. And fun. Well, uh, well, yeah. You you like Spice Girls? Like Emma Stone's a huge Spice Girl <laughs> fan. Love the Spice Girls. <laughs> and the best one was when she was on Graham Norton, and Graham Norton tricked her into thinking that he had the Spice Girls there, <laughs> and he didn't. And Emma what Stone. A dick. Emma Stone is freaking. Like legitimately freaking the fuck out, and it must have been during Spider Man because Andrew Garfield's sitting next to her, like, oh, oh and it's like he's like, and they're not here, and she's like, you fucking asshole, <laughs> like, I would have awesome. cried. She was about to, because she's like, I can't, I can't handle that kind of like. She's like, I got to prepare myself for this. So, um, yeah, I love the Graham Martin show. If you don't watch it, I suggest watching it. <laughs> so, Carla, wait for it. All right. Um, speaking of, you know, going back to theaters i'm glad that people are because that amc stock is rising really quick <laughs> that's right i forgot you bought amc I stock. sure did uh, our first movie for real back to the theaters like not counting the yeah, monster yeah. hunter yeah back when because i don't want to count that movie you don't. Uh, our first real movie back was a quiet place Two. Oh yeah was it <laughs> real good yeah huh. sets up another one great oh really mm-hmm. i enjoyed mm. the first one i thought the first one was good was, you know. <sighs> love it um I think I'm going to wait for my first movie to be Black Widow. Sure. I think I want to go see that in theater. That's out in July? Uh, yes. Okay. Either June 30th or July sometime. Okay. Uh, I think they're trying to get it before the 4th of July weekend. I think our next movie is going to be the next, the new Fast and the Furious movie. <laughs> so, okay. Saber is a big fan of these films. That's fine. A lot of people are. And I had to binge them all this weekend. <laughs> And now you're a super fan? All of them. No, they're terrible. <laughs> they're so bad. But they're fun. I like I Thank get it. Thank you. Um, this I, is I'm not gonna lie, the Paul Walker thing at the end of what was it, seven? seven. I got a little choked up. Yep. Yep. It, it hit me right, uh, right in the right in the heart yep. space. Yeah, we made that joke every year. Yeah, but uh, oh god, I and I I made so many jokes during that movie. <laughs> oh, especially uh, oh when his kid throws the car and says car and and he's like cars don't fly, daddy. I'm like, yeah, he sure found that out. <laughs> so I was like, Kevin. I was like, what? They're just gonna softball him in like that. <laughs> Uh, oh, I made so many jokes. I was I was terrible. I'm going straight to Paul Walker. I'm sorry. <laughs> if I could bring you back, I would, buddy. No. You can make another Fast and the Furious movie. <laughs> they sure are. This one looks even fucking dumber. <laughs> Charlie Theron is a bowl cut. It looks terrible. <laughs> I'm sorry. Charlie Theron does not have a bowl cut. Charlie Theron has like the severest of like 90s bowl cuts that you could it is possibly. The bowl, it, she, it's the bulliest the of bowl cuts. The like Romulan a, cut. A five year old kid in a trailer park bowl cut. All it's missing yeah. is a rat tail. Like a Romulan. Oh, yeah. But, oh, yeah. worse. But like, it's even got kind sharper. of blonde. Oh, uh, yeah. It's, it's it's even more it's even sharper than a okay. than a Romulan like it's because it comes all the way back it doesn't it doesn't taper off into the neckline no it, it just goes, goes all the way around yeah all the way around just that sounds horrible I will not it, be seeing that movie it looks ridiculous oh dear God oh yeah yeah oh, it's bad <laughs> yeah. uh, um, it's the, the 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 latest Terminator movie had a similar haircut. The terminate the oh, girl. Oh yeah, the the girl the the, yeah. the girlinator kind of had one. Yeah. Oh sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She did. Anyway, that's right. She did. I forgot. Uh, um. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> uh, nerd grabs. I think we're at. Yeah. Yeah. Where we are. Yeah. Uh, I don't know that I have anything. Fucking do it, man. Yeah. 
Yeah, nerd grabs. Go for it, guys. I don't know that I have it. Go. I I got two, so I got a Nerf gun, and it's the coolest thing of all fucking time. I'm gonna so I'm gonna turn it into because um, I, I'm I'm beginning my weight loss journey. Uh, so my one of my goal cosplays for a year from now is is Shepard and Seven Agent, whatever you want. Uh, but the Nerf uh, CS6 deploy is perfect for like a. Mass Effect shotgun, so I'm going to repaint that some bitch because it like extends nice. and folds, and it's very cool. As you say, yeah. Uh, for those that don't know about this one, the the deploy, um, it, you, you, it's like a briefcase gun. It's, it's <laughs> yeah. very cool. It's very it, it, and it's heavy too for a Nerf gun. It's it's a it's a chunky girl. Yeah, sure is. Yeah, what the fuck is <laughs> happening here? Yeah. And then that button right on the top makes it. Yeah, isn't that cool? <laughs> it's so neat. So. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's a very fun Nerf gun, and uh, so there's a button on the side you have to push while you push it in. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I look up the CS6 deploy. It's it's a very cool Nerf gun. So I got that, mm. along with a, a sniper looking one that I'm also going to put on my costume. Oh, sure. um, nice. But the other nerd grab I got, and this was sort of why I wanted to create this segment in the first place, uh, was to um, was to kind of review items that you that you get that are kind of shilled at us as, as purveyors of, of media. Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I got a, the new blend jet, the what? No, the blend jet. Um, mm. I, I, I got a lot of ads for it on YouTube and on Facebook and stuff. And now okay. that you're listening to this and your phone hears you, you're going to start getting ads for it too. And I apologize in advance, but anyway, it's a, just a, it's a handheld blender, but it's not like a ninja or anything like that. Cause it's fully portable. Okay. Um, and wireless and it's powerful. Oh, I, um, I had a Blendjet one that I got at like a, a Goodwill or something like that, and it was okay. And I'm like, this isn't what because I had seen a couple ads for the Blendjet before. I'm like, this isn't you know what they advertised. And I realized it's because I had the Blendjet one. So this Blendjet two I got is like a stupid. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna have to drink a lot of liquid protein. Oh um, sure, like four weeks before, and then for like a couple months after my surgery. Mm. Um, so it's going to be a lot of blended drinks. Yeah. And this thing um, is... Protein shakes. Before people like look it up, it looks like the ooze container from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It absolutely sure looks does. like the ooze container from Ninja Turtles, huh. especially when I blend something green in it. Awesome. <laughs> but I got the sort of... I got the light blue one. It's very adorable. But yeah, it... Uh, I, I've, I've been using it every every goddamn day. Yeah, it couple, looks A couple looks times sweet. a day, usually. Looks sweet. Uh, it's and the you know everything they promised in the ad is uh, it's lived up to like so 24 far, ounces so. 30 uh, the original one I think was 16 this one I think is maybe 20 okay it looks big yeah it's it's a lot bigger than the original one too okay. um, yeah. but yeah I, I throw a oat milk some protein powder I got the Dole frozen fruits and spinach I do that do, sure. I do that a lot too yeah. yeah I don't do the spinach but I do fruits yeah some yogurt peanut butter well, I don't even taste the spinach. It's just you know, it's yeah, good you just greens and blend it in there. I don't even do the yogurt. Seriously, just the oat milk, the the frozen fruits, mm-hmm. and the the protein powder, and it makes a super thick shake. Nice. And it just pff, smoothies blends it to creamy, silky wonderfulness. So yeah, they don't Blendjet does not sponsor this podcast or anything. Blendjet sponsor this podcast. Yeah, it's <laughs> <this> money. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Nice. But uh, yeah, I I like it, and they you know they're it wasn't too expensive, you know they they were having a, a deal, so there you go. So you gotta, they don't look too expensive online. No, they're not. So um, I guess it, uh, did you want to go? If you're oh, the type ahead. of person who who likes smoothies or goes to the gym a lot, and hmm. yeah. you need something to, uh, and you're tired of that burst of protein powder, <laughs> fucking shooting a goddamn sand missile in your eye when you try and take a drink and it's not mixed up well enough. <laughs> uh, I, I heartily recommend this thing. It's very cool. Also, on the go, like margaritas if you go to a party or something like that. <laughs> now, that felt like I was being paid to say that. That's the dumbest <laughs> shit ever. But no, I just really like it. it. Sounds like you're going to get white cool. girl wasted with that thing. Oh, can I? <laughs> yes. I don't want to get white girl wasted. Way to come Might once. As well. It'll be less expensive. I know. Oh, my God. I'm going to be such a lightweight when I'm done. <laughs> Were you, uh, that, yeah, uh, all your nerd grabs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. yeah. Um, I, mine was just real quick. I actually I thought, thought about it because I'm looking at a couple of them. 
I uh, my, I didn't get personal nerd grabs, but I got things for the show. So I got these little fans today because my office. Oh, yeah, thank God. Uh, my upper level is warmer than my lower level, and I'm trying to correct that. His main level is roughly 40 degrees, like because it's it's 90 something out right now. Yeah, when you first walk into his house, you just blast with your curl, like oh fuck yeah, and he's like, well. It's a little hotter upstairs. Like, oh, I mean, I figured it would be, but like every step, because you actually have to go up two flights. Every step you go up, it sucks a little more. Yeah. Until you get to the top, you're like, oh fuck me. <laughs> I mean, it's still like not like 90 degrees up. Obviously, it's, it's cooler than outside, right, yeah. but it, it's it's warm. It's significantly warmer. So until you get I get, all these electronics going, right? And, yeah. and I figured, well, and when I start my fucking Ceiling 3D printer going, and- well, if I can figure out if I can get the ceiling fan connected to that. Um, because I don't know if it'll support it or not. Until I get that, I mean, even if sure. I after I get it, I'll still keep these. But I got these nice little fans from Walmart. They're very thoughtful. US, yeah. USB little fans. Um, I upgraded some of our equipment, and then I got a little sign that's on right now that is remote control. The sign was very cool. <laughs> I, was, I was very happy with that. Did you notice that on the way in? No. The you recording did? sign when you're coming up the stairs? No, I did not see red that. Fucking you must sign. have had it off. <laughs> Maybe, but it, no, I thought it was on when I. Oh, I did not see it. Oh, yeah, well, well, you all on the way down. Me, yeah. it's, it's it's remote controlled. I'm, I'm a big fan of but it. But it's uh, <laughs> it's just like a little uh, I don't know, like sheet of paper sized uh, plexiglass light up fan sign that says recording, and mainly for my roommate, so that if he were to come home and we're recording, he knows. I mean, I mean, he already knows because he can hear us. But just in case, you know, whatever. He just, but it's uh, it's kind of cool. So I can turn it on off from just sitting here, and I don't have to plug it in or nothing. It's, but yeah, I got that. That was about it. Um, yeah, stuff for the show. Yeah, go Rob. <laughs> All this time, and I still couldn't think of anything. Um, so let's see. I um, I got a couple things. I mean, I I got some uh, new knife blocks. Um, sorry, whetstones. <laughs> I don't know why I call them knife blocks. That makes no Neither. fucking sense. I know what a knife block is. Anyways, um, I got a couple whetstones, a, a good um, rough grit one, and then a 6,000. Nice. Yeah. So I can sharpen those bad boys to a fine point. And um, what else? Did I get anything else? Well, I, I got my smoker and I used it. Yeah. It's real good. I dig it. It's a lot of fun. I also got a uh, a digital thermometer because I'm lazy. Um, Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I got well, one, I got one of my kid. I'm ready. Oh, I've got I've got two of those. I mean, a wireless digital probe thermometer that oh, I can no. stick in the oh, yeah go. in the in the smoker so I can get a better gauge of what the inside temperature is. There you go. Yeah. That's not lazy at all. That's that's, doing, just, that's doing it right. That's smartness. Yeah. Because um, then you don't got to open the door and you can keep it sealed. Yep. Yep, and that's that's the idea. Um, and I discovered that uh, my thick boy smoker does not have an accurate temperature gauge on it. My little one is fine. I know exactly what I'm what I'm uh, burning at, and, and that thermometer. Everyone else on the internet says that sucks, and I'm like, I disagree. It's real good. It's off by just a like. 10 degrees and it's a smoker so you should be fucking watching your temps and checking your meat anyways but but yeah like the big one the the built in thermometer is just wildly incorrect so I got the digital probe and it works it works really well I, it was nice I just I had that on and I had the little remote and I brought it with me to go play video games because <laughs> <laughs> I was like well A the seal on this thing is great and B now I don't have to worry about temps getting all weird and wonky and bouncing all over the place. Cool. Every half hour, go put a little wood in there and <laughs> great. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I did finish up uh, Mighty Ducks Game Changers. Nice. Yeah. Still haven't watched any of it. Hmm. Me neither. No, that's that totally understandable. It is a Disney show. Huh. It's good. I actually really like it. I thought it was. I thought it was better. Than a Disney show, I oh, okay. I thought it was definitely because it it definitely plays to that nostalgia trip mm-hmm. a little bit, especially episode six when they when all bunch of bunch come back, bunch of them come back, um, and and it's a pretty you know it's it's fairly by the book predictable, but it's fun because like they gave Bombay actual fucking plot development. <laughs> 
and it's it, it's good. It's fun, and um, Lauren Graham doesn't suck. Instead of just me, coach me, sad puck, go miss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's kind of what the trailers were saying, though, wasn't it? I mean, that's that was most of his character in the in the yeah. the first couple Mighty Ducks movies. Yeah. Me, coach, me, angry sometimes, me, sad puck, go miss, me, bang kids, mom. Yeah. Yeah. Slash teacher. Momcher. Yeah, momcher. So yeah, no, it uh, it's good. And uh they thankfully like steered into that that particular uh trope. <laughs> <laughs> they steered into it and then like like ju- in the episode that they were sort of like signaling towards it, suddenly like massive left turn and away from it and I'm like, Oh, well that's refreshing. <laughs> Nice. Cool. So, like, spoiler, the mom and Bombay don't end up together. <gasps> I don't know. I'm how sorry. Da- how dare spoiler. you? How dare I? I said spoiler. I know. <laughs> you kept listening. That's your fault. <laughs> no, it's, it's pretty good. I, I, if you're a fan of the movies, I recommend it. it. To steal a Kevin quote. It's not good, but it's fun. There you go. Yeah. I'm learning to live by your rules. <laughs> I don't like them, but I'm learning to live by them. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Alrighty. Anything else? Anything else uh, no. Yeah. No. All right. uh, well, this has been Best Recent Ever, episode 129, brought to you by Heroic Goods and Games and Jaybird Wines. I'm Nick. I'm Rob. I'm Kevin. And we will see you next time. Oh, Award-winning yeah. episode 129. <laughs> The views held here by the nerds of Best Threesome Ever do not directly reflect the views of nerds everywhere.